and I talked to my friend and we, we I figured this is working for her. All I did was like, okay, so I know a place to do it. <laughs> and, I, and I went and did it. Guys generally just think, ah, mama has drama. But sometimes it's not drama she's creating. Yeah, I think the reason why women are mostly they think that it's majorly their responsibilities because you know you will, you're the one who is carrying that child for nine months it was scary because i didn't want things in my body <laughs> i didn't want things messing with my hormones there's a part of weight gain weight loss uh, other complications there's no specific test to say um for joy give her this for mary give her this for jane give her this men should also be part of the decision as to whether or not to use contraceptives and which contraceptives. I actually told her, um, if you get number three, vasectomy, straighter. True story. <laughs> me, me, I'm not about that life, I'm sorry. <laughs> you know. <laughs>
when we did um, the implant. At first, he wasn't so sure about it because he had heard that it causes a low libido, such things. <laughs> so um, he wasn't so sure about it. He asked me, are you sure about this? I was like, I, I'm, I'm, I think the side effects are less than the outcome of having an unplanned pregnancy. Google has been our biggest teacher. <laughs> uh, but I can say there's, we are a little bit paranoid about the other contraceptives, uh, considering we have seen side effects that we don't really know if they belong to contraceptives, but we have relatives, we have friends, so sometimes it gives us a little bit of paranoia. So personally, uh, I use condoms. Those are the best, most trusted contraceptives. But I believe as we proceed, uh, as we progress, we will be able to maybe try one that we will find safe for us. Contraceptives, um, as a definition, then we would say they're either behavioral um, physical or hormonal methods that are used to delay pregnancy. As much as science has advanced, there's no specific test to say um, for Joy give her this, for Mary give her this, for Jane give her this. So more of the time we start with, as with any other disease condition or process when you come to the clinic, we start with a history. But if you're starting for the very first time, then the first, I mean you have to have a consultation to decide what is best for you. So from your history, um, your personal history, your family history, your um, reproductive history in terms of what are your needs, when do you want a child, and also your medical history. So from your history we are then able to, to go, we still have to go through all the methods, but then we'll be able to advise maybe for you this is not the best, maybe for you you can try this, that a medical practitioner is the best person to tell you, um, not your sister, not your mom, <laughs> yes, because everybody is very different. I did the injection first and it was horrible, <laughs> it was horrible. So what happened was, um, well based on, on what I'd also read is that my, my libido would go down and uh, I'd dry up and things like that. So I thought, okay, maybe it'll just be one month and then we'll get back on track. The whole three months. <laughs> and and it, was, it was bad because I, uh, I also didn't want to be, like he would do this, I would feel, I would feel weird, like I don't want to be, don't touch me. He was trying, because you, you, a part of you doesn't know why, and it feels like you're being rejected as a whole. It's not, it's not just, you know, it's just like, yeah, you're a bad decision, I wish we'd never did this, you know. But you also see the, the moods and, you, and, you, and you're trying to sort of understand like okay whatever it is it'll pass tomorrow will be better tomorrow will be better so after the three months it, it lasts three months so when it expired i just i didn't want anything it, no i just didn't want so i resorted to i think counting days sometimes i'd use condoms like once in a while <laughs> but mostly it was it was natural after some time, my, start, my leg started swelling and I ha had heard about side effects and all that. So we weren't quite sure if it's the effect of the implant or it was my nature of work because I used to stand for long taking videos, so maybe it was because of that. Um, so we decided to do elimination method. I decided to remove the implant first so that we know where the problem is coming from. For, for most of the doctors who I visited, most of them were asking, are you on any family planning? So when I tell them it's the implant, I, I was on it, but I removed it. They're like, yes, that could be a reason why your foot was swollen. But now that I had, I already removed it and my foot didn't go back to normal. I'm not sure if it was the cause or it's just something else. Nothing is 100%. Apart from abstinence, I mean, even condoms do fail. All methods have a small, a small failure rate attached to them. So that's one of the things that we, we advise on. So if you decide on a method, then we'll give you everything about it, in terms of side effects, what to expect with it, how often do you get checkups, and the, the failure rates as well. 
there's lots of myths concerning family, I mean contraceptives and family planning. Um, as you rightly said, everybody is very different. So if you had, for example, the, the IUCD or the COIL and you got pregnant with it, doesn't mean that everybody gets pregnant with the COIL. The COIL is just a physical thing that's put in the uterus, so it can move. And for example, if you have very heavy periods, it can become dislodged. Very heavy discharge, it can become dislodged. Or if you had the implant, Iliam Kono, and you got very bad side effects, maybe you, uh, I don't know, you gained weight or you got a, a cyst in the ovary, for example, doesn't mean that everybody will get. If you're using short-term methods, it's different from if you're using the long-term methods, yeah. Because short-term methods, it's something that you have to keep using. Every, either every day you're taking a pill, every week you're putting a patch, every three months you're getting an injection. For the long-term methods, once we are sure that um, it's okay with you, you, first three months you're fine, no major side effects, the coil is in position, then the long-term methods don't need any regular, any regular follow-up, just your normal pap smears, breast exams, and things like that. status of course does. Mm -hmm. Of course the decisions that uh, I think from how much experience I have gathered, uh, the decisions you make when you're married are joint decisions. Sometimes when you're dating you have the independence of making a decision. Yeah, yeah I think the reason why women are mostly they think that it's majorly their responsibility is because you know you will, you're the one who is carrying that child for nine months and then you'll find a deadbeat boyfriend or husband who will run away when, <coughs> when, when he knows you have a baby. So I think that is one of the fears that leads women to sometimes make independent decisions when it comes to contraceptives. Mm. Yeah. When you're dating, you're like, yeah, we'll use condoms, we'll use condoms. But then once you start getting serious, you need to think about long term, yeah? You'll use condoms long, for how long? You know? It yeah. comes a point, you're like, okay, uh, it's me and my wife, I don't need to use condoms, fine. But what do you, what's, what's the alternative to it? After our second born is when uh, I researched, I really did research. I, was, I didn't want something hormonal. Um, and two, I wanted, we wanted something long term, yeah, because we were not ready for number three. So that's we came to the coil. When the time came for us to have the conversation, it was easier to actually talk about it. Um, not that I was the one who was initiating the conversation, but it was it was a lot easier because I had prior knowledge of all these things, and I would be like, okay. So that doesn't work for you, so okay, what's the other option or how do we go about it? What do you feel comfortable using, you know? Um, yeah, and you made it easier just supporting the decisions she makes rather than saying, you know what, we need a contraception now, now, you know? Men don't care if you're, you know, because that, that would have just been really wrong. At the end of the day, the final decision on what a woman should use should be made by a woman. However, we understand that um, our cultural and religious um, setups are, I mean, have an influence on, on how families work, especially for married couples. So we find that for maybe the younger, younger ladies who are not married, um, maybe they're in a short-term relationship or a long-term relationship, then they would make, primarily they would make their own decisions on what they want to use, the woman that is. Um, now in the marriage setup it becomes a, a slightly different because as with anything else, with finances, with education, with travel, then usually it's a shared decision. So joint decisions are wholeheartedly accepted as long as it's not coerced. So it should not be one party forcing the other person to use a specific method for whatever, whatever reason. I had this conversation with someone that there's so many methods to, to, 
that are geared towards women but very few towards men and yet men are, are half the equation you know so it doesn't balance out if there was a method i would definitely use it just so that she is comfortable and doesn't have to adjust her emotions or who she is and i think guys would probably deal with their emotions a bit better no considering we, we <laughs> <laughs> no, in terms of um, guys, mezea, you know, so you just mezea those two emotions, you're just like, ntakufa pole pole. I didn't know, they just find you crying in the kitchen one day. <laughs> I wish they could come up with something for men. <laughs> I really do. Yeah. yeah. They are there. Um, in Kenya, however, it's limited to. To withdrawal method and condoms <laughs> currently. Also in Kenya we have vasectomy. The vasectomy is basically tying the tubes for men. Um, so that's that's quite available in, uh, as well. But in our setting we consider vasectomy permanent and irreversible. There are attempts to, to reverse but the success rates are not very good. Most men think if you get a vasectomy you or you'll not be able to perform. Um, so then that they shy away from because of misconceptions again. Anenda mm. kunikata, you see. <laughs> yeah. So we we try to dispel some of those misconceptions. Mm. There are methods. I mean, in the West, there are some injections that can be given. They are given into the tubes that carry the sperm, so they're able to block the tubes, but not permanently. And these trials, which are ongoing for a, a tablet. There's a tablet for men, and there's also trials ongoing for a gel. So a gel that's applied and it's absorbed into the body and it stops the production of sperm. But those haven't come here yet. Stops temporarily until when you stop using them after a few months, they come up again. You know, women are already complicated as it is. And then the picture of contraceptives and women also brings a lot of issues. There's a part of weight gain, weight loss, uh, other complications. So while approaching contraceptives, it is important to to like approach it with caution. What do you see is the biggest mistake women make when it comes to contraception? So the biggest mistake I would say is uh, first of all, not letting the decision come from inside them. Because once someone else makes the decision for you, you don't even have the confidence to embrace whatever is happening. Before you use any contraceptive, consult first. See a doctor, a gynecologist to be specific. Because uh, there, there are contraceptives which if you have high blood pressure you can't use. Or if maybe you're, I don't, I'm not sure about breastfeeding, but there are things that you can't, contraceptives that you can't use if you have a certain condition. The other mistake they do is uh, copying, copying your friends. You see this one's way it has worked, like that is also another issue. Know what's good for you. You can't do something because another lady has done it and it worked best for her. I think if we didn't communicate at that time as much as you know there was, uh, I don't understand, there was still some sort of communication. I, I was getting what he was feeling and he was trying to get what's happening to me. So I think if we didn't have that, we would have been at a worse place. My biggest takeaway is, as a guy, you need to be supportive, irrespective of where the emotions go, you know? Because um, guys generally just think, ah, mama has drama. But sometimes it's not drama she's creating, it's just a reaction to the hormones, the injections, whatever she's trying at the moment. And if you're not sensitive to that, you, 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 you lash back, you know, and you're just like, ah, whatever. And it's, you just need to be very sensitive to that situation, yeah. He, he checks on me, like with the coil. And now that it's okay, he's, he's cool. Because especially after the injection, <laughs> I think he also got us okay. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, support and, and communication.